That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. It took me from September last year to now to stomach this. I've been to one of the most beautiful places of this planet and as a landscape photographer I took my camera with me of course and I even got the photograph I'm quite happy about. But this trip, let's say, it brought me to think. I mean the nature was amazing. The light was not the best I have to say but this was not the real problem. I would say I will show you a short clip right now where I entered that place where I took a shot as well and then we will meet here again and we will talk about something really really important. Really I think this is the most important video for everyone who photographs landscapes. my friends, very nice to see you. I'm here at uh, Lake Britwicja or National Park Britwicja in Croatia and uh, I've never been here to, uh, to be honest before. I always planned and never did and today I came here and uh, the best thing you usually could do is when you come to a national park like that is pick out one spot, be the first one who buys a ticket and uh, yeah run there before all the crowds are there and take the shot. Now this is uh, not what I will do today because as already mentioned I've never been here before so I do it a little bit more relaxed here today and this means I just will walk through the look at possible compositions of course I have my camera with me I will take some photographs um, it's raining in the moment that's great because I hope maybe not so many people so, so, so something like that uh, but also you don't have problems with uh, burnt out highlights or something like that and I would say let's see what's possible here I'm here now at the first spot where I thought it's maybe possible to get a really great photograph. The only thing is, you know, usually when I try to get a really fantastic waterfall shot, it's good to have uh, overcast weather, rain or something like that. We, we have all that. The only thing is when you look down there, yeah, it looks more like, um, yeah, it's more a whistle shot than a waterfall shot, to be honest. So, yeah, we don't have plasticity here. It looks, everything looks flat and so on. Everything is so big here, but it's so beautiful. It's really amazing. It is the same here. The view is really that beautiful. It's really so beautiful when you look down. It's more Vista than a waterfall shot, the classic waterfall shot. So I would really prefer to go a little bit closer to the waterfall to have or to have any foregrounds or anything like that. So when I, I take a shot here right now, it's just everything's flat and the light doesn't support the light supports even the flatness here in this in this in this case. I mean if you would have a little bit of, of light maybe coming from, from the right here. Yeah, we, it, it, well, also from the left to eliminate all the, the, the rocks up there. This could really work and um, we would also have the waterfall in the shadow then. So there are really possibilities, but it doesn't work in the moment. But yeah, we can't change that. I would say, let's have a look if, if it's possible to get a shot a little bit more in that direction. not easy here to be honest but what I think is maybe what could work were uh, close-up shots something like that or anything where I'm closer to waterfalls uh, not whistle shots that's not good uh, in weather conditions like that ah yeah but anyway it's so beautiful here it is amazing well, I found a composition down there but it's it's like bewitched um, here's so many people, it's difficult to get my camera out, the tripod out, and everyone, whenever anyone steps, everything is vibrating. It's totally impossible to get a shot here. What I really like here is this waterfall here at the left hand side as foreground element. It gives us a, a nice depth here into our scene. We have this uh, wall here with all the water coming down and a little bit of spray up in the, in the air everywhere what gives uh, little, uh, atmospheric conditions. So it would really look fantastic um, to get this view to this distance and also the lakes down there. I really like this, but uh, yeah, absolutely impossible to get a shot here. So 
So now I have a little bit less people and I tried it freehand. But anyway, they always uh, step some through and uh, it's also difficult freehand uh, to, um, yeah, to get rid of the vibrations, to be honest. But I tried it. I'm not sure. I, I tried with a tenth of a second. I hope I, I got it nearly sharp. <laughs> we'll see it. I got this uh, leaf here in, in my foreground, uh, this, this flowers and so on. The a part of this wall here, the, the right hand side, uh, this waterfall down here. Uh, it's a foreground element, uh, these lakes down there, and it's really fantastic. I really like this composition. <laughs> Fingers crossed that it works from there, from the technical side, obviously. I didn't use a polarizer, a circular polarizer, to be honest. Um, I also didn't try for that. It's, 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 so, it's so difficult. Um, there's so many people here. I, I really don't have a um, place here. It was already difficult just to, to get my, my backpack down. So, <laughs> it is amazing. I would really, I would prefer to rent this park for a whole day. I think this would be a, uh, too much for my budget. I think, but when the channel gets bigger, <laughs> maybe then. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> To say I like the photograph I got. I used F18 because yeah I was quite close to the foreground and I wanted to support the atmosphere to the distance with a tiny bit of softness and F18 doesn't work with every lens to be honest it's a good idea to test all of your lenses on how far you can go and I'm link you a video up here where I show you how I do that for all my lenses. With a tenth of a second, I got still too shaky, to be honest, so it's good that I also tried it with a thirteenth of a second. I was not able to go even faster as I didn't want to freeze the water all too much. I had preferred to use something like yeah, an eighth of a second or so, but yeah, I was not able to handle it. The path was always vibrating. You know, usually I had used my tripod. I had fine-tuned my composition. I had tried to, to, to use uh, different shutter speeds. I even had focus stacked this image. I had tried to use a circular polarizer. Maybe I had even decided yeah, to, to enjoy a snack short before I had pressed the shutter release button. But all that was not possible. I mentioned it already on location. It was already difficult just to find a place for getting my backpack down. Now, the thing is, I spent the whole day in that park together with my wife and the photo you've seen already is the one and only I got on that day. And this is not because there would not be more possibilities for compositions or so. The place is amazing. I was just surrounded by people <laughs> all the time. And don't get me wrong here, I know of course that I haven't booked this place uh, dedicated just for me. It's a public place, you buy a ticket, you can enjoy the views. And everyone is allowed to do that, independent of uh, having a camera or not. Everyone has the same rights. I get this, I really get this, but the thing is, walking through the park felt a little bit like, yeah, walking through a museum or something like that. I was not able to get connected with my surroundings. I, I didn't get intimate with the mother nature and that's one of the most important things when it comes down to taking a finite photograph out in the field. And to be honest, it took me quite long to understand the problem. It is simply the nature of big national parks. I'm shocked about the concept of national parks. Or maybe not about the concept. I totally agree that we need national parks and they do even a good job. So this video is definitely not a critique against national parks. It is also not a critique against people who visit national parks. We need national parks because they help to protect the beautiful nature out there against humans. If Blitwitch would not be a national park, I'm pretty sure that everything would be already damaged. Yeah, I'm, I'm more shocked about what the human in general is doing with our nature. I fear 
for the future of landscape photography. Because, and this is important, there is a reason why a national park is a national park. First of all, before a place gets a national park, it is just a beautiful place. But then people recommend other people to go there because it's beautiful. And they recommend the place to other people again, more people, tons of people, and this never stops actually. And ultimately, there comes the point where a beautiful place needs to get a national park. Yeah, I mean, before it gets totally damaged. And the thing is, from that point on, even more people come because it costs money to maintain the national park. And so they do marketing. And don't get me wrong also here, they need to do marketing. I really get this. It is just a visual circle that had maybe been possible to avoid, but this just from the very beginning, before there is a need that the place becomes a national park. And so the shocking thing for me was really when I was walking there with my wife, while thousands of people were also walking there, like Hans actually. When we don't stop this visual circle right now on Instagram, Vero, Twitter, YouTube, where we show and recommend beautiful places to others, that this would be the future of landscape photography. Walking like ants through a kind of nature museum without all the many possibilities for photography. Again, maybe with thousands of possibilities for compositions, but without possibilities just for putting our backpack down on the ground, for bringing our gear and setup. The freedom of using a tripod would only work in our dreams anymore. And I'm not sure how you think about that. Leave me a comment below, it would really be interesting. But for me, that sounds definitely after a nightmare, I have to say. My friends, that's why I have a big request to you. Whenever you upload a photo on social media or a video, whatever, think carefully about whether it is really necessary to geodeck the photo or the video. I don't say never geodeck. I just think we should maybe reduce that a tiny bit when it is not totally necessary for the post or so. I mean, I don't see a big problem in sharing locations with other photographers. I also do that, but there is simply a big difference if we do that just with single photographers from time to time or if we do that yeah, for the entire world whenever we upload just one photo. I know that there are already lots of well-known photo spots out there in the world, but not everyone knows about every single place and there are still lots of hidden places and that's good, isn't it? And let me mention one more thing here. My personal taste or for my, for, for my personal taste, there is also too much trash out in nature. In my experience, landscape photographers are nature lovers and in most cases they really care about the environment, uh, yeah, about the spots they visit. Yeah, I mean, you can't take a photograph, something in, a, in an artistry way when you don't love what you photograph and you care about what you love, right? So whenever you chill deck a spot, please Keep in mind that also other people will visit this place. People who are able to pack a backpack uh, through and bring some meals out in nature, but some of them yeah, are simply not able, and sorry when I'm saying it like that, but I, it seems that some of them are not able to take their rubbish home again. I don't know where, why, because yeah, they were also able to bring it. So my wishes help to protect nature from people like that. That's the only request I have to you. By the way, that's also a kind of mission I see in landscape photography. You know, my priority is to create a piece of art with my photography. That's the main reason why I go out with my camera, because I love nature. But as landscape photographers, we have the might, if you want, yeah, we, we have the might to show to others how beautiful our planet is and how important it is to protect it. For the next generation uh, who also wants to go out with their cameras, maybe. National parks are fantastic places, often with thousands of possibilities for compositions. It's just not so easy to work on a really strong photo. You would really need to yeah, rent the entire park for a morning or so. But anyway, there is nothing wrong with photographing in a national park. I picked out this video here for you to watch next. It is also from a, a national park in Croatia where I got even more than one photo out. And my friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, please give me a thumb up. Share this video with your friends. This could really help to protect nature. And I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.